Nvidia's next-gen GPU is gonna suck a whole lot of juice. Intel is in the even bigger dookie than we talked about before, and AMD is gonna wipe up that dookie and turn it into a castle for themselves. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna go over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Monday, July 15th, 2024, we're gonna start off today talking about how Seasonic did a little oopsie and revealed the power draw of Nvidia's next-generation GPUs, as well as they leaked some undisclosed new AMD graphics cards too, which gives me a little hesitation that any of this is real, but we'll look at what the data shows us. So Seasonic has their power supply calculator for you to figure out how many watts you need to put a Seasonic power supply in your computer. And it turns out when it comes to the RTX 50 series, you're gonna, no surprise, need more. You're gonna need more power. The RTX 5090 requiring 500 watts of TDP compared to the 4090's 450. So that's a significant increase, but it also goes down the lineup. 5080 requires 30 more watts. The 5070 allegedly requiring 20 more watts and the 5060 coming in at an increase of 55 watts or just around 50 percent increase but some of the hesitation that i have here and why i think this could potentially be placeholder numbers and not the actual revelation of tdps is number one see sonic probably don't want to screw around like that and get nvidia on their bad side number two the 5050 coming in at 100 watts we never got a 4050 desktop card i'm not necessarily sure nvidia is going to be endeavored to come out with a 5050 card it there's you know it's a coin flip whether or not that's gonna actually happen but what also continues to give me pause is the revelations that we're getting on AMD's side of things it seems to me based on my speculation that Seasonic had some unlisted things that they accidentally published here on the power supply calculator because they were just potentials not necessarily something that's actually going to happen and the 7000 series has some updates that could be coming out sometime soon according to this 7990 XTX 79 50 XTX, 7950 XT, 7500 XT, as well as a 7700 nothing. It's got no XT or XTX. These are cards that don't actually exist. Could this potentially be the refresh that's supposed to be coming out where AMD's not going for a high-end GPU? So instead of calling it the 8000 series, the next generation's a 7990 XTX. Or could it be like it was with the 6000 series where they refresh it with faster memory speed? So that's what the 7950 XTX TXs. Who knows? Nobody. I suspect that potentially we're not getting these GPUs. It could be possible, especially since some of these GPUs were in a Rock'em update that happened last year. So it could just be placeholder names. They could be real graphics cards. NVIDIA's 50 series could consume more power, which aligns with everybody's confirmation bias. So it has to be real, right? I don't, I don't know. It's intriguing. We'll keep you updated as we get more details on this moving forward. But I'm gonna update you on today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by FlexiSpot and their E6 standing desk. Here in the office, we have the E6 in the 55 inch bamboo top with the black frame and man, does this desk look good? The desktop itself is one solid piece constructed of solid bamboo boards and the three leg frame system has been upgraded to increase the load bearing capacity. With these enhancements, the E6 can support up to 325 pounds at over 20,000 movements. They're so confident in the E6 strength that FlexiSpot provides a 15 year warranty for this desk. It's also super easy to transition from a sitting working position to a standing working position with the E6 smooth and stable movement, all controlled from the conveniently located keypad with dynamically backlit buttons. In addition to raising and lowering easily, the E6 also has wheels at the bottom of the legs to make moving the desk around your room super easy. On top of being sturdy and easy to relocate, the E6 is also super spacious. Currently, we have our E6 set up with the 27 inch monitor and a laptop with room for an iPad and some decor off to the side. All wires and cables for your setup are easily managed with FlexiSpot's included cable organizers, allowing for a clean and efficient workspace. If you're looking for an upgrade to your desk, then check out the FlexiSpot E6 for yourself via the link in the video description. A huge thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. Well, just like the FlexiSpot E6 can go up and down, turns out the release date for the anticipated Arrow Lake CPUs from Intel can go up or down. We're getting new rumors coming out indicating that Intel might be inclined to release these CPUs sooner. 
Who knows why? We'll talk about that in a second. Aerolite getting some details that the qualification samples are going to be moved from the end of September, early October, all the way up to be late August, early September, just a few weeks improvement to make sure that they can actually hit the market sometime in October for the full release. This is coming after a lot of rumors that have been thrown around in the last week that Arrow Lake might be delayed until December when people are like, oh man, that sucks. Oh, Intel's not going to be able to compete. But according to a lot more leakers, it does seem like the trajectory for October makes a lot more sense for Intel. And I, I can guarantee on the inside, they want this CPU generation to come out. They want Arrow Lake to hit the streets because the news on the 13900K and 14900K debacle is getting worse by the day. We're getting new game devs coming out and saying, hey, uh, Intel CPUs, they're 100% of our failure rate. This is bad. This is really bad. And uh, AMD experiences 100 times fewer crashes. And it's not just a matter of if these CPUs are going to fail, it's when they're going to fail. The failure rate for these 13th and 14th gen CPUs, according to one game dev, is nearly 100%. Alderaan Games coming out and saying that despite all release microcode BIOS and firmware updates, the problem remains unresolved. Over the last three to four months, we have observed that CPUs initially working well deteriorate over time, eventually failing. And the failure rate we have observed from our own testing is nearly 100%, indicating it's only a matter of time before all affected CPUs fail. Then the game developer behind Warframe came out and said that 80% of their game crashes are on Intel's i9 chips. They released a actual pie chart showing you the breakdown. And yes, the vast majority is 13900K and 14900K and their derivations. There are some i7s chalked in here, but for the most part, it looks like the i9s are a big problem. Now, Warframe did qualify the fact that this is before a major BIOS update that came out recently, which appears to resolve a lot of this. So it doesn't necessarily align that this is going to be unresolved for them, but it does line up with what Wendell said in his video from Level 1 Text that it appears like 50% of Intel CPUs can be fixed with a BIOS. 50%, you gotta chuck them in the trash. You need to get an RMA. Intel's gotta give you a replacement because they appear to be problematic. On top of the fact that game devs are experiencing higher repair costs because the companies that come out to service these servers are finding out that Intel is actually going to fail at a much higher rate, so they have to charge more because there's too much work to be done in these situations, and it's costing game developers a lot of money. It's costing gamers a lot of time, and it's gonna culminate into being a much bigger problem, which we'll talk about why it's gonna be an even bigger problem for them, especially with some of the new 9950X benchmarks that have come out after Reese throws you some deals. It's Prime Week, you gotta watch him. He's gonna tell you about all the Prime Week deals and if you don't watch him, he's gonna cry. Reese cries every every time you skip forward. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And hey, we've got some deals to start your week off right. And first up, we have the HyperX Fury S gaming mouse pad, specifically the large variant, which is going for $7, making it $12.99 off. But then next up, we have the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X 3D desktop process, going for only $469 if you have Amazon Prime, making it $230 off for AMD's flagship current. And then lastly, Ryan, us off we have this beautiful alienware 34 inch 3440 by 1440 165 hertz curved quantum dot oled gaming monitor for only 699 dollars and 99 cents making it 200 dollars off and with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers well reese prime week is happening and unfortunately we won't get many deals on the 9000 series riser chips because they're not existent yet they're going to happen after all of these big tech deals that are happening but the 9950X is appearing to be a monster. There's new Blender benchmarks that have come out for this thing. And one of the cool things about this set of benchmarks is that it's happening at different power profiles. Somebody actually went through and benchmarked them at 60 watts, 90 watts, 120, 160, 230, and then even more beyond that. So this initial benchmark set you can see right here, the 9950X is outpacing the 7950X by about 20% once you get to the highest power profiles. It's one of the big deals that's happening with Ryzen 9. It appears that they can scale a little bit better with higher power, something that has been the bane of Ryzen is that it just, once you hit a certain TDP, you're not going much further, but it appears like the 9950X has more headroom in that regard. Up to 230 watts, looking very 
good. But then additional testing with a 253 watt power profile with an overclock, and then additionally an unlimited power profile table, making it so that it's uncorked, unlocked, getting up to 80 degrees Celsius, 5.6 gigahertz, making it so that this is the fastest that theoretically a 9950X could go in Blender benchmarks. And what you could see from that testing is, it appears like 253 watts is the limit, and then you get diminishing returns beyond that. The unlimited PPT, not giving you much more than just going 253 watts with an overclock, but that is still a substantial upgrade over the 230 watt PPT from the 9950X, which again, beating the 7950X, destroying the 14900K. That is one of the apparent things here in a lot of different applications, whether that's professional, and we're still waiting on gaming benchmarks, but according to AMD, it does kind of wipe the floor with but the thing to note here is that the 9950X is beating the 14900K 40% faster at the same power draw. The 9950X matches the 14900K's peak performance at only 120 watts. And then on top of that, it beats the 12900K at 60 watts. That's the two generations old. And then the 5950X, it beats that at 90 watts. So the 9950X is looking to be a rather spectacular CPU that I'm excited to get my hands on. I really want to put that into my system and I could potentially go to a retailer sometime soon because according to somebody over on Reddit, they got them in their store, Electrical Employer 22. Hey, I'm looking to buy these chips. I don't get review samples. I could use a chip. I, I buy it. I would like to test them. I wanna see how these Ryzen 9000 CPUs do. All of the preliminary benchmarks are looking exciting. The 9000 series, it could not come at a better time for AMD and it could not come at a worse time for Intel. The instability investigation that's being leveraged by Wendell and Level 1 Techs and then the fact that they are not necessarily handling things well on a PR front and the fact that it looks like their Arrow Lake chips still aren't ready when they were supposed to come out last December. This is bad. This is bad for Intel. AMD is looking like they're probably going to slop up a lot of the the market share that's going to be happening right now. And I, I'm curious if like these might be so popular for people who might be like, I need to get off Intel. I need to get out of my 13900K, 14900K that we might not even have enough 9950Xs to go around. Paper launch, maybe? Are these even going to be ready? But I will remind you, um, we actually don't technically know that the Ryzen 9000 chips are launching on July 31st, which is the expected date because AMD just said that they're launching in July and they said that at Computex and then have had no clarification on official dates. So I don't have enough review embargo. I haven't signed any pay. I'm sure reviewers like uh, people have been posting their pictures with them on Twitter when they're not supposed to be. And uh, I'm sure they know when these are going on sale, but I haven't signed an NDA here. Uh, so I, I'd like to buy it. I'll tell you that. And you guys like to tell me your thoughts. You put them in the comments. Otherwise, why would you? Why would you type them? You'd want somebody to read them, right? We got Corey Matthew, the dude from Boy Meets World. Hello, saying if you went back 10 years and told people Intel CPUs would be crashing and struggling to keep pace with AMD, I don't think they would believe it. Yeah, because that was just kind of at the height of 4790K, merging into Skylake 6700K, DDR4, DDR3 era. Uh, that was prime bulldozer FX 8300 and uh, the black edition CPUs that AMD was releasing and uh, the lawsuit that they were wrong about calling them eight core CPUs when they're really four cores that share cache. It was, uh, it was a bad time for AMD. You're right. It probably, it probably would not have been believable back then with the pure dominance that it, Intel had at that moment. And we got Deke saying, Lisa Sue rubbing her hands together at this exact moment. <laughs> I've been waiting for Intel's downfall like that. And we got Jason saying, imagine if you're an indie game dev and suddenly out of the blue, your engine randomly crashes or there are inexplicable performance issues cropping up exclusively on a select number of developer or testing machines, but not on others in identical scenarios with identical code. That's what happened to some clients of mine. They called me in to help diagnose the issues with their programmers. Turns out there was neither an issue with the code nor the tool chain. I've honestly never seen such a widespread of seemingly unrelated issues that could all be fixed instantly by a CPU replacement. Boy, 
this this appears to be widespread. This appears to be very unfortunate. Intel uh, has a lot of explaining to do, and they've been so quiet on the subject matter that this is probably not a great place for them to to keep mum on all of it. And we got Goddess of War saying, Wendell's testing is wild. Looking back at 90 days worth of rolling logs from vendors, seeing the numbers of errors is over a thousand plus on the i9 versus less than 20 on any AMD CPU, that's a wild margin. If you're a vendor and you're using either of these for a game server, that's not anything you can deal with. You shouldn't be using these for game servers, but there's no way you could take the financial loss. You'd go with the 7950X or anything else to avoid the loss. Yeah, I mean, just, incredible investigative work by Wendell and the deep dive for him to be able to go through crash logs and identify something that looks unrelated. It looks like companies are just being like, yeah, those are just normal crash logs. And he's like, no, go go investigate. I, I promise you there's something there. There's something about Intel CPUs that are causing these to happen. And by George, he was right. And that's just uh, a fantastic person, Wendell. I've met him several times at, at Computex and various different events. He is uh, world class. Um, and I, I'm glad that he's on it. And it he, I think he broke the lid open on this and it's, I don't, I don't think we're at the end of it, especially as game devs start to report their side of the story on how Intel potentially is not good for them. And then we got a rouse lamp saying, not the Nevada. I like that pun. It was good. I see what you did there. And you won't see me anymore because hot news is over. I will be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow and it's Prime Day, allegedly, which, you know, all the YouTubers are gonna say, hey, use my affiliate link so that I can earn the cash to continue the operation. We're gonna be no different.